I'm Laura. I'm the girl with the blowtorch. I'm a gemologist and a history buff, and here we're gonna talk about the fascinating world of gemstones, whilst trying to brush up on my bench skills that I have disregarded for far too long. Oh! That's, that's how you break a saw blade. That's, that shouldn't happen. We have been fascinated by gemstones for thousands of years. Drawn to these colourful candies that Mother Nature has been oh so kind to tempt us with, we have steeped them in superstition and held them in high regard since the early existence of man. Yes. One thing that history has taught us is that if there are people, there will be jewellery. Gemstones and jewellery have been worn as body adornment and used as talismans for millennia. By examining early jewellery, we can learn a lot about our ancestors and the evolution of society that have gotten us to where we are today. And yes, good people of the internet, I'm going to discuss some of the outlandish superstitions and gemstone lore that our ancestors believed to be true of these natural wonders. Let's heat things up! Amethyst. It has long been believed to ward off drunkenness and intoxication. The word amethyst is derived from a Greek word amethystos, which basically means not drunk. There you go. The 16th century French poet Rémi Bello described in his poem L'Amethyste ou les Amours de Bacchus et d'Amethyste the creation of this magnificent purple stone, in which Bacchus, also known as Dionysus if you prefer the Greek reference, god of wine and intoxication, was with his tigers, as you do, pursuing a maiden named Amethyst who refused his affections on her way to the temple of Diana. Amethyst prayed to the goddess Diana to remain chaste, and as luck would have it, Diana heard her plea for help and swiftly came on down to help her and turned her into a beautiful pure white quartz crystal to protect her from this drunken brute of a god. Immediately overcome with remorse for his actions, Bacchus poured a glass of wine over the crystal as a pitiful offering, dyeing it purple forevermore. No wine, thank you. No wine, thank you. No, no. Please, no wine. It's a rather sweet tale, but I feel like Diana could have helped in a slightly less permanent way, though. I mean, she's a goddess. If she can turn someone into a quartz crystal, surely she can make a wall out of crystal or, I don't know, summon up some kind of divide between her and the blinking tigers? I for one like to own gemstones. I've never wanted to be one. To this day, Amethyst is still strongly believed to ease the effects of drunkenness. And I believe it, because my mom, she wears this beautiful 1940s amethyst ring. She drinks all the time, but I've never actually seen her drunk. Incredible. Another popular gemstone that has had ancient minds warped with superstition is topaz. Now I'm supposed to keep my mouth shut and uncover topaz? at the risk of my own skin. The ancient Greeks believed that wearing this lustrous beauty could render the wearer invisible in times of need. F***ing invisible. I wonder how that one was tested and proved. The Romans considered the stone to bring strength and protection, especially when traveling. So it is said that the Roman Emperor Hadrian wore a topaz ring. Not to be thought of as just simply blue or golden brown in color like a lot of people think. Topaz comes in a spectrum of different colors and therefore rarities. Topaz is allochromatic, which means its colour is caused by natural trace impurities of elements, rather than depending on an element from its basic chemical composition. In actual fact, it is quite often found as colourless crystals or lighter and less commercially attractive colours that are then irradiated or undergo heat treatments to improve the colour. Because they all deserve to be fabulous. For instance, pink topaz can be created by heating yellow to reddish brown topaz from Brazil that contains traces of chrom chromium, <laughs> chromium uh, which is the element needed to, to create the pink color. So you heat it to approximately 500 degrees Celsius, and then it's followed by a slow cooling process or a screening of a cinematic masterpiece. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Altering a gemstone's colour is a very common process, and as natural pink topaz is extremely rare and highly sought after, this process makes it more widely available on a commercial market. Would you like it gift wrapped? Naturally occurring pink topaz is so rare that the pink topaz mined from the Ural Mountains in Russia 
which was one of the only few known deposits in the world, was restricted so that the Russian royal family were the only people allowed to don this exceptional stone during the late 18th and 19th centuries. Yep. In 1804, Tsar Paul I of Russia commissioned the most exquisite pink topaz demi perure to be fabricated and given to his daughter, the Grand Duchess Maria Pavlovna, on her wedding to Karl Friedrich, which is now in the hands of the Swedish royal family. Let's hope the demi perure brings them good luck, because I think it's safe to say that the pink topaz definitely didn't bring good luck and protection to the Tsars. Ooh. However, if you suffer from dim vision, why not take the advice of St. Hildegard of Bingen, a 12th century German Benedictine abbess and writer who recommended soaking topaz in red wine for three days and nights, then rubbing it onto the eyes, just making sure that the red wine lightly touches the eyeball. Because why not? These days you may as well just update your glasses prescription. But if you're feeling a little nervous about hitting up the optometrist and you just happen to have a decent sized topaz crystal and some red wine you don't mind desecrating, then by all means, let me know how you go. Well, hello to you, lovely, seductively rich red ruby, you bloody gorgeous thing, you. The color red is linked to our most intense emotions, such as passion and anger. But my mum also recently said that she associates the color red with go. go. I found this a little strange, but it does make sense as to why she didn't get her driver's license until she was in her 30s. Red bean, stop! Now to me, the color red invokes a sense of urgency, which is the only sensible reason I can imagine for why, according to many sources around the world that turn out to be quite hard to trace, it is said that apparently if you put a ruby in water, it will cause it to boil instantly. Bollocks. I reckon some impatient punter was a little hungry one day whilst preparing lunch and for some reason they dropped a ruby in the pot just a moment before it reached boiling point. Et voila. A legend was born. No, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Ruby is known as the Great Protector. The Bamar people, people from Burma, now Myanmar, believed for it to protect to its full extent, it needed to be inserted into the owner's flesh, thus becoming part of the body and in turn they could not be damaged or hurt by mortal means of attack. So of course, this was done in preparation of warfare. And vice versa. Some Asiatic tribes actually used garnets as bullets because they were thought to inflict a more deadly wound upon the enemy because they embodied the color of blood. It seems that some rebels in northern Pakistan actually used garnets as bullets or were merely thought to have just thrown garnet crystals at British troops on the Kashmir frontier in 1892 during battle because they thought that they would actually be more, um, more efficient than traditional lead bullets. What I'm imagining from this historical account is that it has to have at least stemmed from three or four pretty ballsy rebels <laughs> just picking up rocks and crystals and just throwing them at British troops during battle just to show a bit of muscle. And the legend has been respectfully extrapolated from there. If you are part of the gemstone or jewelry world, or if you just forgot everything from your high school chemistry class, you may not know that ruby and sapphire are actually the same mineral with exactly the same chemical structure. They're just colored by different trace elements. So to put this simply, the presence of chromium gives the red color in ruby, and the presence of titanium or iron gives the, the blue in sapphire. Sapphires has been highly regarded as one of the most beautiful and romanticized gemstones in gemstone lore. And as it so stands, once upon a time, it was actually thought that you could ingest it. What do you know? In the second century BC, Greek historian Demigeron, Demigeron, <laughs> however you like to put it, shared the school of thought that a mixture of ground sapphire and milk fixes all sorts of ailments, ulcers, headaches, stomach pain, Twitter. <laughs> but let's not get carried away with ourselves. It's not just any old sapphire that can be used to cure such ailments. It has to be a fine caliber. So, there has to be some sort of quality hierarchy there, right? Right? One medieval writer by the name of Wolfgang Gebelcheva. Gebelcheva. 
conducted experiments to find the creme de la creme of gemstones, and he figured out that one of the best ways to pick the highest quality gemstones was by placing a spider in a vessel, suspend a gemstone above the spider, and swing it back and forth like a pendulum. Now, if the gemstone holds great power, the spider will soon die. He doesn't speak of any particular time frame, but knowing how some people feel about spiders, I don't think soon is a specific enough time frame to deem any stone worthy of this power. I would just hazard a guess that the poor wee thing just died of suffocation or a mere lack of will to live. But hey, I do recognize a solid case of arachnophobia when I see one. Okay, although some of these superstitions were pretty whack, some of them were actually based on some decent reason. The ancient Egyptians, those smarty pants, for instance, understood that gemstones with certain chemical compositions could actually aid in medical practices, such as placing heliotrope or bloodstone on the body to stop blood hemorrhaging. Hemorrhaging. They also made eye paste and eye wash from lapis lazuli and powdered sapphires to protect the eyes from the harsh desert conditions. And also, powdered pearls were drunk to calm stomach upsets due to its composition of calcium carbonate, which is still used today for those with calcium deficiencies. I'm looking at you, mum. <coughs> As for the rest, our ancestors gave us some colourful historical entries of their trials and tribulations to look back on. And I for one am glad that inserting rubies into our flesh is no longer thought of as a good idea. It's not. Right? I'm the girl with the blowtorch. Subscribe and come check me out next time for some more gemstone adventures. See ya! The girl with the blowtorch. Ha. Good, 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 good. There's a full stop there. That's why I stopped talking, but I guess I stopped talking for a little bit too long.